Hello, my name is Attorney Nisa Ford, and today I want to talk to you about prenuptial agreements, which I will refer to as PAs. I had the honor and privilege to attend a wedding for my friend this weekend, and I did have an opportunity to talk to her, and it was a follow-up conversation that we had uh, from a couple of months before where I brought up a PA. And when I originally talked to her, I could see her, like she was completely appalled that I would bring that up. And most people think that when you bring up something like that, that you're basically assuming that their marriage will fail. And that's not the reason at all. The reason why I brought it up is because I was hoping and wanted to ensure that her and her soon to be spouse had that hard conversation about money. A lot of people will plan the engagement, they plan their wedding, but they never plan their marriage as it relates to finances. So I wanted to make sure that they were starting their marriage off on the right foot. I've been a divorce attorney for over 10 years. And what I've learned is that most people get divorced over money. And when I ask the question, I find out that they never had that conversation before they got married, or if they did have it, they ignored the response, hoping that they could change their partner. Words of advice, you can't change your partner's idea about how they're gonna spend their money. I was happy that I had the opportunity to talk to her at the wedding because she admitted that she was appalled when I brought it up, but it did make her realize that they needed to have that discussion. And so even if they didn't end up with a PA, having the discussion was really important. The process of getting a PA requires disclosure of the finances of each party. So you're looking at, you know, bank accounts, any type of investment accounts, retirement accounts you have, uh, all the assets that you have, your cars, your homes. Also, uh, if you have any debt, that's super important. So having the conversation gives each person the opportunity to know how much their partner makes and they also have the discussion about how much each person will contribute financially to the relationship, which is extremely important. Also know that a PA is not a will. So there's a lot of myths that it's like, oh, you know, if I get a PA and my partner passes away, gets hit by a car or something, I end up with nothing. A PA is not a will. It only comes into play if you get divorced. So hopefully by taking the finances issue off the table, there'd be nothing else to argue about and therefore increasing your potential of staying married forever. Secondly, a good reason for a PA is that people are more likely to divide their property and their debt equitably or fairly when they love each other. So in the process of deciding who would get what in the unfortunate event of a divorce, you're more likely to make sure that you're fair because at the time when you love this person, you wouldn't even imagine of taking advantage of them. That's very different in cases where people don't have the PA and it's time to get divorced. A lot of times people are spiteful and they don't want their soon to be ex-spouse to have anything and they go through great lengths to make sure that that happens. So having a PA can ensure fairness and equity as it relates to your property and debt in a divorce. Lastly, having a PA can significantly reduce the cost of any divorce. So if you are one of the unfortunate people that end up needing a divorce, having a PA already outlines what you're gonna do with your property debt. Sometimes there's additional information in there about what you wanna do with other things as well, but you don't have to fight about those issues. And so if you do have minor children, there's other things to think about, or if either party needs spousal maintenance, you also have to consider that. But a lot of times the, the argument has to do with the division of property and debt. So removing that issue can help streamline the divorce and reduce costs, whether you decide to do it on your own or hire an attorney, because that part is already figured out for you a long time in advance. So my name is Nisa Ford with Legal Resolutions. Thank you for listening.